we're going to be looking at the motion of an object that is free falling in the presence of drag. So let's consider a skydiver who's just leapt out of an aeroplane. Initially, the only force acting on the skydiver is his weight. He does not experience a drag force. The drag is a frictional force the skydiver is moving against. In this case, it's air resistance. And the reason why he doesn't experience a drag force is because initially his velocity is zero. Due to the fact that the only force acting on the skydiver is weight, then the initial acceleration of the skydiver will be equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration due to free fall, due to gravity. And as the skydiver is accelerating, his velocity will be increasing. Drag is proportional to velocity squared. That means if you was to double the velocity, then the drag would increase by a factor of four. And that's because of velocity squared. And if velocity is doubled, two squared will equal four. So the drag force will increase with velocity. However, before terminal velocity, the weight will be greater than the drag force. As I said previously, when the velocity was zero and the initial velocity was zero, the drag was zero. And now that the skydiver is accelerating, his velocity is increasing, so the drag force is increasing. But it's less than the weight. So the forces are unbalanced. That means we have a resultant force acting on the skydiver, which will equal the weight minus the drag. So the drag force is increasing because the velocity is increasing, but the weight remains the same. So that means then the resultant force, which is weight minus drag, must be decreasing. So if the resultant force is de decreasing, and resultant force equals mass times acceleration, then the acceleration must be decreasing. So it will now be less than 9.8 meters per second squared. Eventually, then, the skydiver will reach a speed or a velocity when the drag will equal the weight. Well, then the forces will be balanced. And so that means the resultant force will be zero. And if the resultant force is zero, then the acceleration will be zero. And so the skydiver will move at a constant velocity. And we call this velocity terminal velocity. It's the final velocity of the skydiver. After the parachute opens, then the drag force increases, and that's due to the large surface area of the parachute. And so the drag force will now be greater than the weight, and so the skydiver will decelerate downwards. And that's because the resultant force on the skydiver, which will equal the drag force minus the weight, acts in the opposite direction in which the skydiver is moving. However, because the skydiver is decelerating, its velocity is decreasing, then the drag force will decrease until it equals the weight. And so the deceleration of the skydiver will decrease because the resultant force is decreasing until the acceleration is zero when the drag force equals the weight and the resultant force is zero. And so the skydiver will be moving at a constant velocity, a new terminal velocity that is smaller and so is safer for the skydiver when he lands on the ground. So we're going to look at the factors affecting the magnitude of the drag force. 
well, if you remember, the first factor was the velocity of the object. And we said that the drag was proportional to the velocity squared. So if we doubled the velocity, the drag would quadruple. The other factor we saw that affected the drag force was the surface area of the object. So if you increase the surface area, then the drag force increased. You get more resistance, more friction, because you've got a larger surface area in contact with the fluid that you're moving through. Another factor would be the shape of the object. So if the object had an aerodynamic or streamlined shape, it would have less drag. So if you had a skydiver who wanted to reach a higher terminal velocity, he would need to reduce his drag force. And one way he could do that is by forming a streamlined str shape. So that is, he would fall vertically downwards, head first, and arms tight by his sides. He could also reduce his surface area by wearing tight fitting clothes. And the final factor is the viscosity or density of the fluid. So if the fluid has a high viscosity, that is, it's more viscous, more thick, then the greater the drag force.